one of history's greatest misconceptions relates to the use of nuclear weapons. While the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are widely known, Japan was actually not the only country to have been the victim in a nuclear case study. The following is the untold story of the Marshall Islands. Around 4,000 years ago, a group known as the Lapita split from their roots in East Asia and spread across thousands of islands in the Pacific Ocean. The Lapita were talented navigators, masters of the sea, who traveled by canoe and developed advanced fishing techniques. They arrived at the Marshall Islands around 2,000 years ago, creating their own unique culture. Early Lapita settlers soon found the islands to have an abundance of natural resources like coconuts, breadfruit, papayas, bananas, taro, and more. Their society became structured around the Iroj, a chief-like figure who was treated with divine levels of respect by others in the tribe. The Iroj gathered legitimacy through leadership in daily activities as well as leadership in long-term vision. Separate Iroges controlled individual atolls, and sometimes tribes warred against each other. It wasn't until the 1500s that Europeans began to sail through. One of the earliest known encounters was the arrival of a Spanish explorer, Alvaro de Saavedra, who was greeted by a local Marshallese tribe in 1529, with a barrage of stones thrown at him and his men. But not all encounters were hostile. Some even involved the exchange of gifts and hospitality. A few decades later, in 1592, Spain claimed much of the Pacific as part of the Spanish Empire. This included the Marshall Islands, which they considered part of the Spanish East Indies. But since the islands lacked any strategic value, the Spanish ignored them in practice. Native tribes continued their traditional way of life. Two centuries after the Spanish claimed the Marshall Islands, the area actually got its name. In 1788, British naval captain John Marshall and his fleet of prisoners, which were en route to the prison colony of New South Wales, passed through this part of the Pacific. Marshall didn't bother disembarking or interacting with any natives, but during his pass through he did end up giving the islands a name that stuck. During the 1800s, global demand for coconuts increased substantially, and European interest in the Marshall Islands increased in kind. Christian missionaries from America and Europe had already started to arrive, converting many islanders from their ancient polytheistic religion. German merchants arrived next, during the 1860s, to establish industrial coconut production. The German operations grew, despite Spain's claim on the islands. In 1885, Germany annexed the Marshall Islands completely, later purchasing the islands off the Spanish formally as a means of reimbursement and appeasement. The islands were a German economic colony, governed under a monopoly by the German Jaluit Company. The Germans exerted unprecedented levels of control on the lives of the islanders. When World War I rocked the world in 1914, Japan saw an opportunity to expand its influence in East Asia and the Pacific. With the Germans distracted, the Japanese captured the Marshall Islands, expanding coconut operations beyond German levels, and militarizing the islands with a series of naval and air bases. This made the Marshall Islands a target of the United States during their island hopping campaign just 30 years later in 1944. Intense fighting between the Americans and Japanese on Kwajalein Atoll resulted in the United States taking control of the Marshall Islands, an ownership later recognized by the United Nations after the war considered part of the trust territory of the Pacific Islands. But the fate of the islanders took a dark turn at the hands of American leadership. The bubbling arms race between the US and Soviet Union created a need for suitable nuclear testing grounds, preferably an area that was separate from the American mainland, separate from any American allies, and even separate from America's enemies. Remote and isolated in the Pacific, the Marshall Islands turned out to be a lucky country. Between 1946 and 1958, the United States tested 67 nuclear weapons on the Marshall Islands, most of them being on the atolls of Bikini and Anahuatak, including Castle Bravo in 1954, the most powerful hydrogen bomb ever tested by the US government. Residue from Castle Bravo spread to nearby islands who were not warned to evacuate. Little kids on Ranjalap Atoll are said to have played in radioactive ash as it rained from the sky. In 1946, the people of Bikini asked why they had to evacuate their home. The Americans told them that it was for the good of mankind and to end all world wars. America had forced the people of Bikini to evacuate to an island they had long considered uninhabitable the Ronjerik Atoll, while the people of Anewatak were moved to Ujalang. The Bikinians nearly starved. It was only after the global press took notice of their conditions in 1948 that America even bothered to address their situation. They moved the Bikinians once again to Keeley Island. 
In anticipation of incoming regulations, America detonated 33 more bombs in just a four-month period during 1958. In 1969, the people of Bikini were told that their island was safe for their long-awaited return. They started to go home that same year, but by the mid-1970s it was clear that the island was still contaminated, and those who returned had been exposed to considerable amounts of radiation. The Bikinians were forced to evacuate their island yet again. During the next few years, the Marshall Islands pushed towards greater self-governance. In 1979, the Marshall Islands left the trust territory of the Pacific Islands, which had previously bound them to American rule. They then ratified their own constitution and became fully independent in 1980. They formed a government that mixed aspects of the American presidential system with aspects of the British Westminster system, but their relationship with America remained close, both by choice and by necessity. In 1983, the two countries signed the Compact of Free Association, a generation-defining deal that granted America permission to maintain its military base in the Marshall Islands in exchange for Marshallese citizens being allowed to work and live in the mainland U.S. visa-free. Under the pact, the U.S. also provided economic aid and military defense. But the Marshallese future with America is far from certain. A nuclear claims tribunal created in the late 1980s estimated the damages of nuclear tests to be worth around $2 billion, a verdict ignored by the American government. The Compact of Free Association is set to expire by 2024, at a time where exasperation with the Americans is strengthening. A continued perception of American indifference towards the legacy of its nuclear tests led the Marshallese government to call off a meeting with U.S. officials at the end of 2022, a move that derailed their negotiations to extend the treaty. Meanwhile, China's strategic presence in the Pacific has only grown. China has recently overtaken the U.S. as the region's number one trade partner. As of 2023, the Marshall Islands is just one of 13 countries that still recognizes Taiwan as independent, a testament to their long-time alignment with American interests. But the tug of war between China and the U.S. intensifies, and as Chinese efforts to reunify with Taiwan progress, the geopolitical calculus of the Marshall Islands may change. The Marshall Islands of the 21st century is also positioned on the front lines of humanity's most prevalent issues. In 2014, the Marshall Islands sued all nine nuclear-armed countries at the International Court of Justice, arguing that they were each in violation of nuclear non-proliferation treaties. Their case was dismissed in 2016. Marshallese also fear that rising sea levels might sink their islands completely by the end of the 21st century. In 2020, Marshallese President David Kabua made a plea to the international community, asking that they not turn a blind eye as the impact of climate change becomes more real. Sea level rises also threaten to burst the concrete dome containing radioactive materials where Americans had stored much of their cleaned up nuclear waste. The threat posed by this radioactive dome remains one of the greatest challenges facing the current Marshallese government. In all, the 42,000 people who live in the Marshall Islands have been through a lot that their greatest challenges still lie ahead. The 21st century will determine the fate of this country. It is vital to remember this story, learn about what they've been through, and come together to ensure that the future of humanity can be better than its past.